On the 18th day of October, Halloween gave to me 18 undead trains, 17 morticians regaling, 16 Vincent's cracking, 15 Lee's counting, 14 brides abiding, 13 Carfax Abbeys, 12 fathers stripping, 11 au pairs drowning, 10 children creeping, 9 Roddy seizing, 8 snowy mazes, 7 bacons digging, 6 doorways pending, 5 children yowling, 4 zombie bulls, 3 haunted mirrors, 2 monster houses, and a fog that makes it hard to see. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the 31 Days of Halloween. This is Sunday, October 18th. Uh, first of all, happy Sunday. Hope you're enjoying yourself. I got my uh, my cup of coffee right here to do that very thing. Um, so uh, we are on a bit of a zombie kick here. And <laughs> uh, to pun our way into this movie, we are going to pull into uh, the station and talk about Train to Busan. Uh, from 2016, one of those zombie movies that comes along every blue moon that sort of restores your faith in the zombie movie as a genre. Um, I recently watched Shaun of the Dead with two people who had never seen Shaun of the Dead before. And if you can have that experience, I, I highly recommend it. It was a, a great deal of fun. And it had me thinking about, you know, uh, we... we watch a bunch of zombie movies, or if you're like me, I watch a, a more zombie movies than I oughta, more than I know will be good, but there is something about that siege story that I've always liked. I think I think it's a formula that works, right? You put people in a high-pressure situation, and you watch the whole thing kind of explode, uh, with zombies being the, the catalyst to bring out the true nature of, of the people in the story. So it turns out that that formula, as tried and true as it is, produces a whole lot of crap with people who don't know how to execute that formula very well. Well, let's talk about director uh, Sang Ho Yeon, who had done some television and so forth, but had never done uh, like a, you know, uh, certainly not a movie that reached this kind of international acclaim. And it's kind of strange, uh, and not so much now. But at the time, uh, even four short years ago, it was kind of strange for a genre movie to really reach that kind of critical mass where everybody kind of knew about it. You know, even people who weren't necessarily watching horror movies, there were people that they knew who were like, hey, have you seen Train to Busan? And then I think it hit Netflix, maybe Netflix or Hulu or one of those services and seemed to kind of uh, catch another uh, a gust of, of wind to uh, propel it into the consciousness. And so Train of Busan was uh, a little bit of a phenomenon in that I think, you know, the year it came out in 2016, it was one of those movies that was just on everybody's top 10 list who bothered to compile one, uh, especially if they were genre list. Even if they weren't genre list, a lot of times it ended up there. And it had, uh, I think, an interesting take on the zombie. And, you know, they're, they're still that kind of fast running mindless eating zombie but I think the way that they portray this sort of you know food at any cost to the point that they're kind of tumbling over one another to get to food and it becomes this almost like uh, uh like they're pack animals or something but each one working individually instead of in concert and it it like that is really stirring the the direction uh of of the zombies being i mean just a force of nature just terrifying you know and the speed with which somebody becomes a zombie is also uh sort of stepped up so there's not you know there's a little bit of of this in most zombie movies where somebody gets bitten and they're you know hiding it and 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 fretting and that kind of thing there's a little bit of that in, in this, but it's sort of like once you get bitten, it's like, okay, you got a few minutes, I guess, but, <laughs> you know, we need to take care of this problem too sweet. Um, and as I said, you know, when, when you get down to it, most zombie movies are about the emotional hooks in them, and that's kind of where Train to Busan shines, and once more, it's not revolutionary. That's the, 
the the neat trick of Train to Busan is it doesn't do anything that you haven't seen another movie do before. It just does all of it really, really well. And so in portraying this father who's got this, you know, a strange relationship with his daughter now being thrust in a situation where he has to save her, not just save her, but has to act in, in concert with other people. And that's kind of the interesting uh, the contrast in Train to Busan is that you have the hordes outside who do not work together, but there's a lot of them and they're fast and they're violent. And then you have the humans who could work together, but don't because of their own, you know, foibles and shortcomings and that kind of thing. And so as a result, humanity kind of ends up getting fucked because we just can't hold our shit together. Like the two people who make it out do so because, hey, we all acted together and made sacrifices for each other so that, you know, people could, uh, uh, could escape and could live. You know, like I said, it's a real neat trick that none of this is surprising. And the movie is two hours over two hours, somewhere in that neighborhood, a, l- uh, a little bit over, I believe. Um, sorry, right at two hours. And the thing, uh, again, not to use a pun, just whips by, you know, because once you have the initial setup and it does a pretty good job of, of setting up the characters quickly and uh, and then kind of getting you on this train and letting the shit happen. Like, the, the reason you your ass is in the seat is to see zombies attacking this train and on this train. And sure enough, you get it. You know, and, and there's there are characters that you certainly dislike. But I don't think there's a, a character in the movie that I don't understand. You know, like even the uh, the sort of asshole businessman who makes some decisions that threaten the lives of our heroes... Even that guy, ultimately, you're like, I kind of, I kind of see where he's coming from. Like, I understand, you know, he's, he's being, he's taking a very uh, reactionary approach to all this and, and maybe being a little bit too hard line, but also it's a fucked up situation and people are going to deal with that fucked up situation in different ways. Um, like I said, I don't agree with it, but I understand it. And speaking of the characters very briefly, uh, there is a rich tapestry in this movie of great characters. My favorite being the dude who is trying to protect his pregnant wife and is kind of a, just kind of this meathead, but he's this wonderfully like charming, wonderful guy. And l- let's say not everybody makes it in this movie because almost nobody makes it in this movie, but uh, that was in particular one of those uh, like Hodor from Game of Thrones moments of like, man, you know, I understand why this character's got to go and it makes sense for this character to to go in this way, but it sucks. I'm going to miss him when he's gone. And, and yeah, it, it's wonderful. I haven't seen Peninsula yet. And, and at some point, uh, I'm, I'm sure I will when that becomes more readily available, but I, you know, I don't need a sequel to this movie. This movie's just about perfect the way it is. So I uh, I love Train to Busan. I think it's one of the the great zombie movies of the past. I don't know, sixty years, I guess. When whenever uh, fifty years and change, whenever Night of the Living Dead appeared and and changed the landscape forever. Um, it, it's a fantastic movie. It's filled with heart. It's you know, it's violent. <laughs> it's fun. The zombies are not fucking around, and and there are some great sequences of just masses of bodies chasing people. It's it's terrific. If you've never seen Train to Busan, what are you doing? It's it's one of the great zombie movies. Um and and if you have, do yourself a favor like I did and watch it for the first time since it came out and you're like, "Holy shit, this movie's good. I should have put this on Oh, I did put it on my top 10 list. Okay, good. I was smart. I did the right thing." <laughs> so, that's it for Train to Busan. Look, uh, it's a fantastic movie. It is well worth a spot on our 18th uh, as the 18th film in our 31 days of Halloween. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you had a good weekend. I hope you enjoy your Sunday if you uh, catch this on the early edition. And uh, and we'll be back tomorrow with another movie uh, here on the 31 days of Halloween uh, from Legion Podcast. Hope you're enjoying uh, this holiday season. I know I am. So get out there, have yourselves a very spooky Sunday, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.